This week on El Car, we're going to be taking one of the simple little empty cabinets and building a termination cabinet, termination panel, for the GMRS repeater build that we're working on. And that's what's coming up next in part two here on El Car I Am Radio. Welcome back to part two of building a GMRS repeater. Today we're going to really put a lot of time and effort into this termination panel. In the part one, we took some things out of this panel that are no longer necessary, and we're going to add some things to this panel that are necessary for this project, such as a cat controller, power cabling, and so forth. And we're going to take away that nice little reed switch for fan control and we're going to utilize an integrated circuit for that in uh, a, a later release. Here are some of the guts that we took out of this particular termination panel just to show that it was used for a previous project. And what we did is we took some snips on some aluminum stock and created some face plates for these uh, connector uh, outs. We're not using these, so we're going to cover them up and we're going to uh, screw them on and make it look reasonably professional and uh, so we uh, snipped out some of these plates we also need to put some holes where the screws are located so that we can affix those to the back of the termination panel we have two sizes one for the big one and one for the smaller one a couple of the smaller ones actually in addition to creating the smaller uh, covers there we're going to put holes in those for the cabling that's going to come out of the termination panel now, AC4DM whipped out his hole punch, uh, <laughs> a little bit uh, heavier duty than what you would use for paper, and uh, this creates holes in uh, aluminum stock like we have here. So you can see that he's going about the duties of putting the first hole on this little panel, and then we'll mark, we'll uh, put it up on the termination panel, mark it for the second hole, and that way they'll line them up. In addition, we took a portable drill press, and we need to drill four holes for the cat controller. We're going to use standoffs inside of the termination panel, and we need four holes for those standoffs, so we're utilizing a portable drill press for that. We've covered up the old holes with some aluminum tape, and you can see the four new holes, two here down at the bottom and two up at the top. These will line up with the cat controller's PCB holes uh, on the board, and uh, we'll be ready to install the cat controller here in just a few moments. Trying to make it look as professional as possible in these uh, kits. Uh, here we're just test fitting the holes and making sure it's going to fit. We actually had it turned the wrong way, so here's it's turned the right way. You'll notice this has some additional circuitry. You can use DTMF codes with this controller and so forth, which we are not going to use in this instance. We don't have phone lines up at the abandoned repeater site. Next, this little cable with the correct brown connector for the CAT controller had a 9-pin connector on one end, and we're removing these wires because we're actually going to utilize the ends of these wires to connect to the uh, termination bridges inside the termination panel, so we don't need the 9-pin connector. So we're just using a soldering iron to remove the cabling that was all ready there from a previous project. Here's the uh, end result. Uh, you can see the little brown connector that connects to the actual uh, CAT controller on set of pins, nine pins I believe it is, and the uh, wires themselves. We're going to put spade connectors on those ends, which will go into the bridge, the, uh, the, the pinout bridge that we have on the inside of the termination panel, which makes, e makes connecting the radios, the CAT controller, and the power so much easier. We took some of those spade connectors, removed the plastic coverings, which uh, AC4DM hates, and if you've ever tried to crimp with the plastic on, it's, it's kind of a pain. And now we're just kind of snipping some of the ends off the spade connectors. They're a little bit long, uh, and we don't want them to touch on the other side of the bridge, so we're just uh, shortening some of those uh, uh, ends there a little bit so that they won't touch on the other side. There's actually two sides to the bridge, and uh, so we're just shortening them up. We needed nine of those for the little brown cable to go from the CAT controller to the termination bridge. So that's what we're doing is finishing up just uh, shortening those ends just a little bit. 
playing a little bit of tape. We're going to label these this bridge uh, pins one through, what do we got there? One through seven, I think it is actually. And so we'll be labeling those with a pen. You can see the other bridges are already labeled as far as numbers. And that way when you do your uh, Visio diagram, you do your documentation, your, uh, your numbers will line up. We're installing the spade connectors on the other ends uh, that we uh, liberated from that nine pin connector a little bit earlier. You can see we've got uh, the trusty crimper that's in AC4DM's uh, uh, toolbox, but uh, again, lots of different crimpers would work here. So we got our first couple of spade connectors on there. We just need to finish up on the others. We saw just a little bit earlier of affixing the tape inside the termination panel, and now we're labeling the termination panel uh, for the different pins that are going to be uh, coming off the CAT controller. Uh, I think two or three of those are actually ground, so you can see those are by the black leads that you see on this brown connector. And a couple of those are joined together, and then I think we have a ground on the far right-hand side as well. But there's the cable finished. Now that we have those spade connectors, we can install it on the CAT controller, the brown connector, and then install the spades on the bridge, as we'll see coming up. Toning out that to make sure that uh, all of our leads are good and that the brown connector is also good. So one of our other Elmers got to work installing the uh, the actual spade connectors to the bridge. And uh, here's a couple of grounds. We have them back to back so uh, that they'll fit correctly underneath this uh, little screw here. He's going to loosen that up and then insert those two that represent grounds to the same pin. That'll be a common ground essentially there. And uh, we're actually going to use a little jumper from pin one to I think it's pin six uh, a little bit later here in the video. So anyway, we're just getting those installed. You can see the brown part of the connector is already on the CAT controller, and now we're just installing those loose wire ends to the bridge. So that's what we're finishing up here. I believe KK4JPX was doing the honors here, getting this particular cable installed. And uh, uh, the great thing about these pinout bridges, again, it just makes it easier to troubleshoot. It also makes it easier. You don't have to build custom cables for this. Uh, if you don't want to, you can use these bridges to connect everything. And uh, I find uh, from an electronics background, it's much easier to troubleshoot. It's also easier to see where everything is and where everything is going when you're documenting. All righty, finishing up some of those connectors. See, we've got three on there. Looks like he's got them all connected now, just uh, finishing tightening them down a little bit. Uh, one through seven again. Three of those are actually grounds coming off the CAT controller, so we're only using several of those. A little bit later, we're going to bring wires in from the radios over to the CAT controller so that the CAT controller can do an ID on the transmit uh, radio. We're installing power now on lead number six. So you can see there on the bottom left, we've got uh, number six highlighted there. It's also red coming off the CAT controller. And uh, what we're going to do is connect that to the bridge up at the top. And that's where our power comes in, uh, is on that bridge there on the top. And so we're just adding, and then again, another spade connector to this guy. And this will go to, I want to say, the third connector on the bridge from the bottom second or third connector. You can see the red and black wires bottom right there. So we're going to be attaching that so that we have the positive lead for our 12 volt DC. We'll also install a black one for the negative side of the 12 volt. So here we are just tightening down that and now we have the positive lead installed. We'll need to install a black lead from the common ground there on the top left over here to the power side as well so that the CAT controller will have both positive and negative leads for 12 volt DC. So you can see we've routed the black leads here. You can see we have a jumper going from seven to one. We have the red lead. The remaining terminals will be used from the radios. And uh, so we have power now to the CAT controller coming over here to the bridge where power is installed. You can also see the circuit there that is used for supplying power to a fan. And just checking to see on the, uh, the uh, amperage meter here, milliamps at that, uh, is the CAT controller getting power? And in fact, it is. So we've got good connectivity. So just to finalize here, you can see we've got the bridge installed. We've got the CAT controller connected. It has power. We're pretty much ready now for beginning the uh, custom cables from the radios over here into the termination panel so that we can begin utilizing those two radios in a repeater setup. You can see we have our 12 volts DC and we also have our milliampers there going to the CAT controller. 
Stay tuned, folks. Part 3 is coming up where we'll build those custom cables, and who knows what else we'll get involved in in Part 3. Hope you're enjoying the series. 73s.